think we're okay just to go. All right. Uh, so my lightning talk is about how to initialize x from an expression y. And uh, you'd think this would be simple, but of course this is C++. But we've got a lot of good options. You just have to know how to use them. And you've probably all heard of almost always auto. And so I'm showing several ways of initializing things that almost always use auto. And the important part of the talk is when is the time that you don't use auto? What's, when is the almost hap when is the not almost happen? So I'm going to start with cr creating a decision tree. And you know, for each box, we're going to answer yes or no and, and go down this tree and, and see when we should use each thing. So at the top of the decision tree, I've got should x and y have the same CV unqualified type? Otherwise, are we not doing any kind of conversion between y and x? And if we're not doing any kind of conversion, then, then the next question is, is x supposed to be a reference type or not? And if it's not, if it's not a reference type, then auto x equals y is a great way to make a copy. Just make sure you don't put explicit in your move constructors and copy constructors. It's legal to do so, but I've never seen a good use case for it. Um, if you do need to, to create a reference type, then an L value reference auto ref equals x, or R value reference auto ref ref x equals y. Those are great ways to do it. Commonly used in for loops when you need to write through to each element in the loop. Uh, no big complication there, nothing should be surprising. But when we get to making a type conversion, then I want to ask the next question. Is the type conversion you're looking for an explicit type conversion or an implicit type conversion? Let's say for now that it's implicit. My claim is that not using auto, this is the place where you, where you don't want to use auto. You say capital X, X equals Y. This is the oldest initialization in C++ we, we have. This was legal back in C++ 98. And I want to explain a little bit why I think this is the, the right way to do it. A lot of people are surprised here. In, implicitly, instead of using explicit syntax, I thought we liked explicit syntax better. Here's an example uh, piece of code. I'm going to take two durations, of course, um, average them, and, um, and give the result, at the result an average in nanoseconds. And here I'm showing not following this advice. I'm using an explicit conversion from the sum of my durations to nanoseconds. So what's wrong with this? It, it seems to work good when I pass two microseconds and one millisecond. Gives me back the right answer. Everything's working fine. What if the user passes in a couple of ints? This actually runs, compiles, compiles and runs. That's really the better order you should do things in. Uh, and, and then it prints out a bad answer. And my my claim is that it's printing out a bad, bad answer because we used explicit conversion syntax when I should have been using implicit uh, conversion syntax. I expected the two durations that I'm inputting to add, and then that sum duration, I expected that to implicitly convert to nanoseconds. So let's try that, re rewrite it. Our first use case is, is still print, you know, it still works fine, printing out uh, the correct answer. And now when the user accidentally forgets to add the units and accidentally sends ints into my algorithm, I get a compile time error because ints don't implicitly convert to nanoseconds. So previously, I was just I was asking for an explicit conversion, and I was ac accidentally getting the wrong conversion. If I ask for the implicit conversion, that's a much safer thing to do as the client. And this isn't just a chrono issue. Uh, here's another example where I've got some function, takes a shared pointer to derived in it, and it's a, it's a big function, you know, for, for whatever reasons, because we don't have time to write small functions. And in the middle of this big function, I'm, I'm converting my shared pointer to derived to shared pointer to base. And I'm not following my advice here, I'm using explicit conversion syntax. The problem with this is that sometimes you refactor code. And one of the refactoring tools or guidelines is, does f really need to own this function? Uh, this, I'm sorry, this uh, shared pointer? Does it need to have partial ownership of this pointer? And you might decide no, and so, oh, I should change the parameter of this function to derived pointer. So I do that, 
and I recompile my program and everything works well, except that it, it, everything compiles, but it doesn't work. I've got this statement in the middle of this function f that will happily construct the raw pointer to a shared pointer to base, compiles using explicit syntax, and I've got a runtime error. If I had used the advice I'm showing here, I would have written it as shared pointer base BP equals P, that is implicitly converting from shared pointer derived to shared pointer base. Now, when I went through this refactoring exercise and changed my parameter from shared pointer to derive to just a raw pointer to derive, this now refuses to compile, which reminds me, oh, I need to fix this other line in the middle of the code. And of course, the fix would be, you know, change it to base pointer BP equals P. So, prefer implicit conversions? Yes, for clients. As a client, you should ask for the weakest conversion that, need, that will get the job done. Use implicit conversions every time they compile. Now, type authors, they should reserve implicit conversions for those that are safe. You know, say, uh, those conversions that don't change the meaning of a type and that uh, don't lose information. You know, for some reason, this was really funny yesterday, and it's not that funny today. I'm blaming it on the AI uh, on the AC. Uh, so this is the heart of the talk, uh, even though we've got this big decision tree. And uh, this is what I want you to take away. So we'll go back to our decision tree and, and finish it out. Um, if, it's, uh, if you have to use explicit syntax, then auto is a good choice again, and you have to decide whether to use curlies or parentheses. And of course, you know, if you know about the deal with vector, this is a, a well-advertised problem, not with just vector, but with all the standard containers. Sometimes curlies will give you one answer and parentheses will give you the other. So you have to know which to use just because of your type. And uh, that completes my talk. Thank you very much.